never get old. Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the Porsche Taycan driving experience. So we're out in the Taycan Turbo S. First impressions, very fast off the line, very smooth, very quiet and quite large. Brakes are very impressive uh, as you'd expect, they have the obviously normal retardation system but also they have the um, retardation braking system that pushes the charge back into the into the batteries but uh, as you push on as you touch, start, to touch, start to touch the throttle it's very fast so it feels very comfortable steering wheel very nice very direct steering it almost feels like you're in a, a totally different type of vehicle that isn't a car it's uh, so modern and so different the feel very direct different to any other vehicle that I've ever driven before for sure including um, supercars petrol engine supercars and such like good visibility from what I can see B pillar is quite blocky though so when you turn around it's quite a blocky B pillar and the rear view mirror you've got a, a bit of a slot there but you can see substantially well through the rear the drive mechanism is interesting you've got a knob that you turn for normal sport sport plus and individual holy shit, that's fast <laughs> and that's just the normal God, the acceleration straight off the line is nothing short of phenomenal. You'll get to switch it into sport mode in a few minutes. In fact, let's drop back a little bit here and we'll switch it into sport mode now. So I believe that uh, sport mode drops this is the drops sport mode drops the ride height down a little bit and increases performance. <laughs> I don't think you want much faster than this. If you're an adrenaline junkie, this car will sell itself. But yeah, I mean, very, very nice to drive. You feel very confident in the car. It's, it's definitely confidence inspiring. Steering very direct, and I guess the steering is motorized in a different way than a normal electric steering as well, probably more advanced. It feels more capable, and you have very good feel through the steering as well. We're currently driving along country lane, and it's, it's not, terrible but it's not great either it's quite undulating and you can feel all the different ripples of the road for sure um, just passing the lorry there so I went a bit quiet <laughs> make sure I'm not gonna scrape anything um, so you can feel the road very well you can feel all the di little different ripples of the road all the, all the ripples of the road of the undulations of the road as well um, Put it into Sport Plus now. Holy sh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is flipping fast. <laughs> the acceleration is nothing like you ever will feel. It's just phenomenal. It's like a drug, you can't stop trying it. <laughs> back a bit so just gonna try again swap plus holy sh <laughs> it 
this is the Turbo S, so this is the um, highest performance vehicle of the of the fleet. I believe it's around 700, 700 horsepower. I think it's 700. And about 750 brake horsepower and um, around the same uh, newton meters of torque. Or pound foot of torque, I think it is. I think it's a little bit lower on newton meters. It'd be interesting to take be interesting to take this car on a track I suspect the performance will be absolutely awesome let's just try it again on the um, acceleration Holy <laughs> that that'll never get old <laughs> that'll never get old <laughs> God <laughs> guys you've got a test driver taken <laughs> It is phenomenal. It's not a one trick pony either. It's not all about the acceleration and the speed. It's very, very comfortable. The braking is very, very good. The feel through the steering is excellent. And the suspension is fantastic. As I said, the suspension changes ride height. And when you're in normal, the suspension and the car rises. So the suspension adjusts and the car rises to adjust for um, for things like sleeping policemen, speed bumps, etc. Um, and also, um, with a higher ride height, it uh, would be more supported for undulating roads and such like, so for more bumpy roads. Sport and Sport Plus is obviously um, for driving faster and more, uh, more aggressive driving, I would say, for pushing on more, and obviously for track mode as well, for driving on the track. I don't know if this has been around the track much, but it'd be interesting to see what the speeds are around the Nürburgring, say for example. And of course, it's and of course it's really quiet, so you can talk normally, which is fantastic. So you've got adrenaline performance, fantastic road holding, phenomenal comfort, fantastic feel through the steering. I use the accelerator, which is definitely the go pedal. But uh, yeah, so you, it, pretty, it pretty much is the full package. Um, very impressive car. I must say though, first of all, this is the first electric car that I've driven, so I'm going to be a little bit biased. Um, I have looked at a few reviews of this, um, particularly um, good old Doug DeMuro. He did a fantastic review of the Taken. And um, the review that he performed, I, I, he had a similar effect when he pushed the go pedal as well. And I thought, oh yeah, well it can't be that that good, surely. It is. <laughs> it is that fast. You're, you're really slammed back in the seat, and it's not just a perception of being slammed back. And you know, like a lot of people say when they're reviewing cars, when they say, oh yes, it really pushes you back in the seat. This thing slams you back in the seat. I think it's about as close as you're going to get into an Apollo spacecraft. You've got the the electric sound, of course, when you're when you're driving normally. I believe you can adjust the sound so you have a, a different side of different type of whooshing sound when you're driving it. With regards to the touch screen, yeah, you've got you've got substantial touch screens in the car. You've got a passenger touch screen which also has GPS map navigation. You have a central screen that also has GPS and map navigation. And then you've got a touch console. The coffee cups are down below. You have the drive selector and the drive reverse and parking selector up on the actual dashboard near to the steering column. And with regards to the center console where you'd normally have the gear lever, you've got a touch console. Now, it's a different type of touch console. If you, if you think of an iPhone and you think of sometimes you have to push to get tactic feedback, uh, that is what this centre console feels like. It's not really what I would call a touch screen. You have to press, you have to really push down. And when you do, you get taptic feedback, like a bounce back for your finger, for your digit, whichever digit you're using, obviously, um, to give you feedback that you've actually made a selection. And obviously you get um, feedback through the screen as well, whether, whether it be a change of a colour or the item that you've pressed, actually depicting that you have actually touched it and pressed it by changing shape. 
it's impressed. The only thing that I would say is that even though you can see all the gauges through the steering wheel, I'd say that for me, maybe it's because I've got bigger hands, um, the steering wheel could do with being a little bit be a little bit bigger, but I can see why they've done it this size. It gives it a nice small size and obviously it's um, readily usable. You'd probably go into this thinking, well, hey, this is an electric car. We want naturally aspirated petrol cars. You know, we want the performance V8s from Ferraris and Porsches. And, you know, we love the sound. You know, we love the performance from them. Yeah, electric cars are gonna have more performance, but, you know, do we really need that? We love our petrol driven cars. You wait till you get in and you drive one of these. It's gonna change your viewpoint. Having said that, me personally, I love everything that goes with a, a petrol driven supercar and a petrol driven sports car, but this could wave your mind and will, for a lot of people, will wave your mind and I can see why a lot of people are getting into these and are, and are purchasing these. overtaking it that you don't slam into the car in front of it. <laughs> So I've got to switch it into normal to deal with the speed bumps. We've got the 4S here as well, as you can see. The normal taken and the 4S as well. So we've got all the models here. So we've been very fortunate. We've been able to take out the top of the range, the Turbo S. Obviously the Turbo is just the model name now. And it was really a model name from the outset, but people linked it directly to there being a turbo in the car. Um, but there isn't a physical turbo in the car, although the performance of this thing far surpasses any turbo that you have in a, in a petrol driven engine. We're at uh, Calcott Hotel and Spa, which is where they're holding the, the test drive. So we're just going to sign off now and conclude the test drive and we'll do some more footage around the outside of the car. So this is the Taycan turbo model. This is the upper to middle tier version of the fleet. The upper tier version is called the Turbo S. Now the turbo model has around, or does have, 625 PS, so that's pretty much the same brake horsepower, whereas the Turbo S has 750 brake horsepower. That is pretty impressive, you can imagine, and the delivery on that performance is instant. The, it's got instant torque, so you hit that go pedal and it goes, it really does go. Electric cars have certain features, and the Taycan is no separation from that. For example, on this particular model, when you slide your finger underneath this catch, next to the actual charging port the charging port electronically opens so it's like swiping a credit card underneath the reader you just swipe, swipe your hand underneath and the charging port opens automatically by itself so we've come down in my 1997 911 which is the last of the air cooled the 993s so here you've got the old with the new so you've got a 2020 Taycan turbo so if we look at the front of the vehicles you can see the 2020 Taycan is substantially wider this is a sign of the times most of the sports cars nowadays aren't really sports cars they're really grand tourers especially electric vehicles and if you look at the front of my car it's very nimble and very live like the old classic 911s were and this is how we've progressed so we've progressed from from the size of a nimble sports car 911 to an electric 2020 vehicle so let's have a look at the rear of the vehicles you can see here you've got the, the light cluster which is standard now on the Taycan models. And you've got the Porsche lettering, which is interestingly embedded into the actual plastic. I don't know what you'd call that design, but it's like a 3D design into the back of the, into the, back of the vehicle. And then you've got the, the Taycan turbo script in almost like an italic font. 
on the back which is um, very hip and very modern and uh, very very um, upkeep with the times that we're in and if you look at the presence from the vehicle on the back again it's quite wide it carries a bit of a a bit of an association with the 911s from the back with the 911 wide body cars and this is the later 911 wide body cars because instead of having just the rear width and just the wide rear hips you've got the car uh, narrowing slightly but going forward to still quite a width on the front of the vehicle as well the flavor of the vehicle is very much of this is a modern car this is modern times and we are modern Porsche now especially with changes such as the turbo being definitively branded as a model name now as instead of being associated with a type of pushing hot air or type of performance for the petrol driven engine it was always perceived and it was always stated as being a model number but it was aligned with being the actual vehicle that had a large turbo in it but now it's about performance and it's about a different model and that is the way how Porsche are going forward in the future with this modern look, modern feel with the high performance electric cars and modern perception of naming their vehicles. So we're signing off now from the Porsche Taken experience here at Tetbury. Thank you very much for watching guys and please make sure that you subscribe and hit that like button and also make sure you select for all notifications so that you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. Please share the video among your friends. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care and see you in the next video.